Welcome back to online classroom Jeku Tio. In this video, we are going to look at part 2 of 4.2, particularly the topic of immunization. First of all, what is immunization? Immunization is an effort to stimulate the body defense against infections or diseases in babies, children, and adults by doing what? By doing uh, by injecting vaccines okay by injection so what is vaccine vaccine contains antigens wait a minute jekutio antigens i thought antigens not good for us yes in the last video we talked about antigens a foreign substance that try to get into our body okay yes it is not good for us but let's continue reading antigens obtained from a part or the whole structure of here is the very important point it is weakened or dead virus or bacteria means the antigens that is in vaccine is already dead or it is weakened so don't worry okay it is safe and the antigens that is being injected into our body remember when there's antigens what does our body do in the third line of the def bodies uh, of our body's defense the uh, wh white blood cell will start to produce antibody all right so the antigens will stimulate our body's immune system and we will start forming immunity against certain infections and the baby needs to um, be injected with a few types of vaccines for example in malaysia this is the vaccination schedule so if you take a look from the day you were born all the way up till you were 15 okay so there are different types of vaccines that you are to take well next we are going to look at immunity let's recall what is immunity immunity is the ability of our body to fight pathogens so that we don't fall sick there are two types of immunity active and passive Active means our body is the one that produces our own antibody. But for passive immunity, the antibody comes from somewhere else. We do not produce it ourselves. And for both active and passive immunity, we have natural and artificial. Natural means it's natural. Artificial means man-made. So for both active and passive immunity, for artificial type, it is actually in a form of injection let's take a look at them one by one first active immunity one more time active immunity means our body produce our own antibodies when it is stimulated by uh, antigen so first let's look at natural active immunity first this occur when a person recovers from an infection what does that mean that means after you fall sick you are already sick and when you get better huh, that is when natural active immunity happen and this immunity actually lasts long let's look at this graph to help you understand first i want to bring your attention to this blue dotted line okay this is the immunity level that means if our antibody reach this level or exceed this level then we can fight the pathogens we will not fall sick so the first time okay the first infection let's say you fall sick for the first time you catch a cold and when you recover your body because you catch a cold that means there is pathogens that already attack your body and you fall sick but your body already produced some antibody when your body is trying to fight the pathogen so your uh, the the antibody in your body the concentration this is what it is the concentration of antibody in your body or in your blood has actually reached this level it has not achieved immunity level yet but when you are being infected for the second time this time your body shoot up the antibody and it exceeds the immunity level meaning now you are immune right now you have already the ability to fight that disease so it actually lasts quite long 
all right that is natural active immunity who's the one producing antibody our own body secondly the artificial one the artificial one meaning we need injection okay so this happened when a vaccine remember what is in vaccine what is in vaccine is the pathogen that is already weak or dead all right it's being injected into your body and what that do is it triggers your body immune system so that it will respond and produce antibodies on its own and this immunity also lasts long and normally uh, vaccines need a few doses right let's say this vaccine this particular vaccine that we are taking need two injection or two doses so the first injection uh, the antibody level go up a little bit because this vaccine has what has the pathogen all right has pathogen and when your body detects that there's pathogen your body actually uh, start producing antibody but it's not enough so after a couple of weeks depending on what type of vaccines you're taking okay that will determine how long after the first vaccine that you need to take your second dose all right so the second vaccine is being injected and your body start to produce antibody even more until you achieve the immunity level meaning now your body is able to fight the disease and this will last very long how about passive immunity so let's remember passive immunity means we do not produce uh, antibody we get the antibody from outside of our body so the natural one actually happens in babies all right babies get antibody from the mother there are two ways if the baby is already born the baby gets the antibody from the mother's breast milk and if the baby is still in the mother's womb the baby can get antibody from the mother's blood that flows across the placenta and this immunity is very short it is only temporary because it is passive remember passive immunity means we don't produce antibody we get antibody from outside so passive immunity natural or artificial they are only very temporary they are short and let's take a look at this graph all right so this is the concentration of antibody in the baby's blood and eventually it will fall okay this is the immunity level after a while it will just fall back the 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 immunity is just temporary how about artificial passive immunity remember artificial means we get injection so passive mean we get antibody from outside so the doctors will give the uh, injection that has antibody called the anti-serum what is anti-serum anti-serum actually help us to fight pathogens help us to fight pathogens without even touching or interrupting our immune system and the anti-serum is actually a clear liquid in the blood and it has antibody to help us to prevent diseases all right so the antibody is inside the antiserum that the doctor put into the injection and inject into the patient's body and again it is very fast but also temporary see so this is the immunity level and the doctor give you a jab and your antibody immediately shoot up to immunity level but very quickly it will fall back and this is given to someone who is already sick okay give someone who is already sick so we don't get the body to produce antibody that's why he or she falls sick all right so we inject antibody or anti serum and the antibody increase very quickly and fight the disease and then wears off very quickly all right let me put all this information into a table to help you to differentiate between active and passive artificial immuni immunity meaning we are only looking at injection just a little side note remember you can always get the notes from jekutio by checking out the description section all right so for active immunity the artificial one what is being injected into our body and how about passive 
Remember, active, we want our body to produce antibody, so we inject vaccine. Okay, and then for passive, we inject antibody. We, our body does not produce for passive in immunity, does not produce any antibody. So what is the content of the injection for vaccine? It is dead or weakened pathogen. But for passive, it's anti-serum. Okay, the anti-serum has antibody. What is the function of the injection? For the active artificial immunity, it stimulates our body's white blood cells so that we will produce the antibody. But for the passive artificial immunity, it fights the pathogens in, our, in the body for us. So because we do not have that antibody, the, uh, the, the immunity or the, the injection actually put the antibodies in our body to help us to fight the pathogens. And who do we give this injection? For active immunity, the person must be healthy. Okay, you don't want to give a person who's already sick more pathogen. That is not good. But for passive immunity, the person is already sick. Patients affected by the diseases. And how long does it take to work for active? Because it needs to stimulate our body to produce our own antibody. It is slow. But for passive immunity, we need to help the patient. So it is very fast. It works very quickly. But how long does it last? For active, it lasts long. But for passive, not so long. It is just temporary. All right. So now that we know it is very important for us to have strong immune system, we need to know what are some of the things that can cause our immune system to be weak. Number one, being exposed to polluted air can weaken our immune system. That is why all of us must play our part to make sure that we have clean air. Number two, exposure to pesticides. That is again a reason why we discourage the use of pesticides. And you have learned in chapter two that we can use biological control in, in the place of pesticides. Number three, stress. All right, it is very important for you to learn how to manage our stress so that our immune system stays strong and we don't fall sick. And finally, we need to watch the intake of our sugar. Why? Because excessive intake of sugar can make our immune system weak. How about some practices that can make our immune system strong? Ah, this is very important, right? Number one, get enough sleep and rest. We are not designed to work day and night, day and night without any rest. So when it is time to sleep, when it is time to rest, remember you need to do that to make sure that you have strong immune system. Number two, exercising and inhaling fresh air. It's exercise is always good for you, okay? Number three, say no to smoking and do not expose yourself to cigarette smoke. That is why in Malaysia, many places you are not allowed to smoke. For example, the hospital, the restaurant, uh, most of the shopping complex, you are not allowed to smoke because even others who are not smoking, if they are exposed to the cigarette smoke, it can weaken their immune system as well. And finally, we have to remember to do our periodic health examination. Visit the doctor regularly to get a health check so that we know our own status of health. Well, that's all from Jekutio in this video. We have finished and completed chapter 4. I'll see you in the next video when we start exploring chapter 5. Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.